Hi everybody, I'm going to give you a quick review of standard form. This is, should be section 5-5 of the foundations class. Um, let me remind you that standard form looks like this. AX plus BY equals C. Uh, important, we capitalize A, B, and C because there are some special conditions. A, B, and C must, absolutely must, be integers. You give me standard form with fractions as coefficients and you are losing points. A must also be positive. That's not the case for B and C, but it is the case for A. Um, let me take. Let, let me tell you this. Uh, it is rare that I give you some some properties of a line and ask you directly for standard form. It's way easier to plug things into point slope form and slope intercept form, and then we take those forms and we convert them to standard form. So let's do that right now. Let's take a slope intercept equation y equals negative two x minus 5, and let's convert that into standard form. Uh, so the y is the, on the left, that's good. The 2x is not, however, so let's move the 2x over. We're going to add 2x to both sides of our equation, and that gives us 2x plus y equals a negative 5. And we've met all the, the, the rules for standard form. x and y are on the left. All the coefficients are integers. The constant's an integer. The coefficient in front of x is positive. So we're done. That's standard form for this equation. But you know what I like to do. Let's make things a little trickier. What if, um, what if the 2 was not negative. What if we want standard form of this equation? Well now in order to move the 2x to the left we have to subtract 2x from both sides. And let's see what that gets us and why this is harder. Now we've got negative 2x plus y equals a negative 5. Again our, co our a, b, and c are all integers but we've got the additional problem, the new problem here that that our a coefficient is negative. So what we're going to do to make it positive is multiply both sides of our equation by a negative 1. As long as we do that to both sides, it's OK. What we end up getting when we distribute our negative 1 is 2x minus y equals a positive 5. Notice how in order to make the 2 positive, we had to change the signs in front of everything else, didn't we? So this is the correct standard form of this equation. Let's make it just a little trickier. I'm going to change the 2 to a 1 half. Well now, to move the 1 half x to the left, we have to subtract 1 half x from both sides. And what we get is negative one-half x plus y equals negative five. Now we get two problems going on. We've got a fraction for one of our coefficients and we've also got that negative. So what I'm going to do to fix that, we're going to use the same kind of trick, but we're going to step it up a little bit. If we want to get rid of the negative, we have to multiply both sides by a negative something. If we multiply both sides by a negative two, then we're going to also get rid of that 2 in the denominator. So when we distribute the negative 2 on the left, well, negative times negative is a positive. Uh, 2 times 1 half is 1. So we get x. Remember to distribute minus 2y equals a positive 10. And there we go. We're done. Um, so if you have fractions, as a coefficient, as we did here, you multiply both sides of the equation by the denominator, and that denominator will cancel the fraction. Um, and if you have a negative in front of your a, then you multiply both sides by a negative. The last thing I want to show you is what really is the strength of, of standard form equations, and that's in graphing. 
Um, let me think for a quick minute here. I didn't really prepare one. Okay, let's do this one. Um, let's graph. Nope, I don't want to do that one. I apologize. Let's do. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, let me erase that. Okay, I got it. I got it. We're going to graph 4x minus 3y equals 12. And I know some of you are struggling with this, but the beauty of an x uh, uh, of standard form is if we is if we want to graph and it, we can figure out the x and y intercepts real easy. The x intercept is the point where the line crosses the x axis and the y intercept is the point where the line crosses the y axis. If we can figure out the x and y axis real easy, all we have to do is plot those two points, connect the dots, and we're done. We don't have to think about slope, we don't have to worry about rise and run, don't have to worry about change in anything, just connect the dots. So let's just for a moment um, and this is easier in class because I use my hand to cover things up. I don't know how to do that here. Um, nope, you know what? I'm not going to do it because I don't know how to do it and I don't want to mess things up. Um, all right, let's go back to where we were. If we're going to find the x-intercept, well, the x-intercept occurs on the x-axis, and for that point, y will equal 0. So I'm going to just rewrite the equation without the y term, because if y equals 0, 3 times y is 0, and we've got 4x minus 0, so we can just forget it. Now we divide both sides by 4, and x equals 3. So our x-intercept is 3. I'm wishing I did that in a different color, so I'm going to do it in blue. There we go. All right, let's figure out our y-intercept. Our y-intercept is going to be on the y-axis, and if it's on the y-axis, the x value for that point is going to be 0. If we were to plug 0 in for x, that 4x term would go away, and all we're left with is negative 3y equals 12. Now we divide both sides by a negative 3, and y equals a negative 4. So we're going to go to our y-axis, and we're going to draw our y-intercept on negative 4. Don't lose track of your negative signs. And is there any hope? Uh, not, not awful, I suppose. And that's the equation for the line. So just bear in mind that when you, and you don't even have to keep straight in your head that we're talking about x-intercept or y-intercept. Just take turns. Set the x equal to 0. Remove the, zero, the, the x term. Solve for y and then put that on the y-axis. Set the y value to 0, solve for x, set that on the x-axis, and connect the dots. So that's the graphing of standard form equations. And, and that's really the beauty of standard form. That's where it really, really comes in handy. So that's it. Uh, the next and last video will be a quick little talk on parallel and perpendicular lines. So I'll see you there.